there are things that God needs you to position yourself in order to receive them. Amen? They are what? Positional. I'm going to I'm going to give an example. When you have a son or a child with adversity, when they need money, you can wire money to them. Amen? But when you have a child on the street, when they need food, you cannot wire food for them. They need to be where? In the house. Am I talking to someone? If mommy has cooked food, mommy cannot WhatsApp food. But mommy is taking care of both children. She has one child who's in varsity. She's sending the money in varsity. She's got one child who's around at home, but is in the street, cannot come and eat the food. Both needs the attention of the mother, but they are all service differently. The other one is what? Positional. They need to be where? In the house. The other one needs to have what? Connection with the mother to get, to get the money from the university. So both of them are what? Positional. is connection with God, and being at the right place at the right time. Are we together? So, many children, many children of God, they are, they, they are not lacking because God does not love them. It's that they are either not connected or not positioned. It's two ways. It's not, God, it's not because God has turned your back, his back against you. No. The story of the prodigal son he was not eating with, with pigs because the father became poor. No. The father was still rich. But because of the position of where he was, he, he was eating what? With pigs. So the same applies in the kingdom of God. Are we together? The same applies in the kingdom of God. But he, 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 he reconnected with the father. He said, the Bible said he came back to his mind. He said, in my father's house there are servants, and those servants are eating better than me. That was a, that was a connection. And, the connect, and why did the connection did? The connection put him back to the position. He walked back to the house. Hallelujah. Are we together? Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this love and your mercies and your grace that you never give up on us. I know that, Father, sometimes we disgust you in a way that any normal parents will say, I'm disowning these children. But, Father, your mercies are new every morning. You keep on saying, come, my children, I love you. We thank you for the blood that continuously cleansing us from all forms of unrighteousness. Speak to us, mighty God, we are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to take notes. I want you to take notes. I've got few people that I follow in mainstream media. One thing that I've realized about myself that all my friends in the ministry are old people. <laughs> Most of my friends, people that I follow in the ministry are old people. And I know why is that happening. Because they are, they are not after recognition or fame. They are after the heart of God. Amen. Eight ways of living a godly centered life. I want us to look at that because they will be the pillars and the foundation of everything that we are going to teach going forward. Eight ways of living a godly centered life. How do you know that you are the child of God? Number one, a life of prayer. A life of prayer. You cannot be a child and not communicate with your parent. Hallelujah. What, yesterday I was traveling. We were going to, coming back from Pretoria with mommy. 
She said, no, listen, listen to Murendini saying something. I say, no, I listen more to Murendini more than I speak. Because I spend more time with the boy. The girl decided to spend time with the mother. It's okay. Even though I love to spend time with both of them and allow mommy to, to cook us a nice meal. I said, mommy, ask Murendini. And she said, Randy said, yes, I speak more than daddy. And in him talking a lot, I get to know his needs before he can even tell me. In, all, in everything that he tells me, I can, I can deduce from his sentence that this young man needs this. He, he is lacking in this area of development. His view, his, his world view needs to be complemented by this advice. Why? Because he talks to me a lot. The same applies with God the Father. God wants you to talk to him more often than you are doing right now. He wants, he wants to spend more time with you, communing with him. If there is one thing that the father enjoys, is, get, is the attention of the children. There was a day that I was very busy at work. A week that was busy at work. It was just on our new financial year, so we needed to implement new things. I spent the whole week without calling my dad. And he called me and said, I haven't spoken to you for a long time. Are you okay? So you see, even daddy needs to talk to you. He needs you to talk to him. Hallelujah. So what is prayer? What is prayer put you in a position for your, put your spirit man in, your, in the position to be intertwined with God. The oneness, the unity of the spirit that you need to have with the Father is centered around prayerfulness. Am I talking to someone? You, you cannot call yourself a Christian who does not pray. Lately, God added an hour in my life of prayer. He said, I need you between 9 and 10. My wife knows that my prayer pattern has changed. He said, it's not enough. I need you more. And I realized, no, no, that, that one hour has, has changed my life dramatically. I'm seeing more spiritually. I'm hearing more spiritually. There are certain things that you are not supposed to go through them as a child of God. Because when you spend time with him, remember, you are talking to God. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, the earth is the Lord in its fullness. And they that dwell in. There is one scripture that I love. It's Genesis 1, 2, that the Holy Spirit was hovering upon the face of the waters. Even today, he's hovering upon the face of the earth. What is he doing? He's connected with God. So when you pray, when you pray, God aligns you with what he wants you to achieve through the power of the Holy Spirit who's hovering upon the face of the waters. Hallelujah. Remember, God never directed the Holy Spirit. He never said, Holy Spirit, go and make the earth there. No, no, no. Go to your down now, uh, animals. No, come back. No, he was there waiting for the word of God. Hallelujah. So, Ask yourself the, this, this question. How is my prayer life and why? How often do I pray? Some of us pray because of situations. And situations that could have been prevented by prayer. We pray because they are here. Prayer makes you stay connected with God, I said. And prayer keeps you sensitive to the will of God. A prayerful person knows the will of God. Hallelujah. Prayer is not, you don't pray before you eat. And pray before you sleep. And pray before you go to work because you want protection. Those are routine prayers. They are good. 
But when do you pray because you miss your father? When do you pray because you miss the fellowship with God? Let us, not, let, let us not talk about need-based prayers. Let us talk about love-based prayers. Father, I miss you. God, I miss you. You know, I couldn't wait to be in this closet just to be in your presence. Just to feel you, my God. I'm here. I don't need anything. Talk to me. Is there anything that you want me to do? It is in those prayers that you find your breakthroughs. Remember, need-based prayers will address your need, not breakthrough. God protect me. You'll be protected. God bless our food before we eat. Amen. <laughs> You'll bless the food. But that's where you are shortchanging God. You are shortchanging him big time. So when you say, Father, I'm here. I want to have fellowship with you. And he says, my son, now you are talking. Now I want to talk to you about you. That is the language of fellowship. You know, son, I've got a farm. And in that farm, I want it to be divided in four. And this and this must happen. But if you go to your father and say, Father, can I have money for, for the trip? Okay, it's fine. How much? 50 rands. Okay, it's fine. Go. You, you are gone. Uh, Father, uh, I'm back. Uh, Mama said there is no meat. Can I have money for meat? Those are the prayers that we are praying to God. And they should change us to know our own lives holistically. Because he's your father. He knows you. He said, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He knows you. And how will he communicate with you outside fellowship? Mark chapter 1, verse 35 to 37. I'm going to tell you something. A prayerless person is full of confusion. And they know how to transfer the confusion. Now, in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. That's who? Jesus Christ. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. You know, everyone is looking for you. The issue of everyone is preventing people to have fellowship with the Father. We got everybody else to please except God. You know, you, you know, you, you know, Pastor, I, 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 I was going to come to church. I was going to come to church. You know, it's just that, you know, I, I, I've started painting my house and I need to complete, you know. Uh, otherwise, if the, one, the other paint goes, dries up faster, the colors won't be the same. You know, why do we always put God behind as if we are doing him a favor? Who is the giver of life? God. And how do you breathe? Prayer. Jesus Christ knew the Bible said, early in the morning he left. He went to a solitary place. I rappel. Whatever you want to accomplish in your life, you have to accomplish it in your knees. Some of us prefer toiling. When everything else fails, we go, we go to our knees. We don't start in our knees. You know, I've got, uh, you know, Pastor, I've, I, I've, I've got this plan. I want to I do this. Did you pray about it? Pastor, no, no, you, you are not listening. You see, this plan, Pastor, will work. Did you pray about it? You are not listening, Pastor. You know, you know, and uh, everything is put together fast and everything, and everything goes, pew. 
when everything implodes, hey, Pastor, please pray for me. What's happening? Hey, ah, Satan is attacking me. No, <laughs> you, Satan is not attacking you. You attacked Satan. You played in his will, outside the will of God. So, when you are a prayerful person, you will know that whatever that needs to be accomplished needs to be done through, what, through your knees. And what you are going to do, put God first. Remember, in the beginning, that one you must know. In the beginning, it's a simple scripture. In the beginning, God, period. So, prayer put you in the position of putting God first. You know that whatever that I need to do, I've prayed about it. I want, I want us to, okay, Holy Spirit said no. Number two, okay, still, still in number one, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. That's one of the shortest scriptures. What does it mean to pray without ceasing? Do I stop going to work and spend all my time in my closet praying? No. You tell your spirit man that you are glorifying God now. I'm waking, you are worshiping. I'm waking, you are praying. There are times that I wake up. When I wake up, I wake up, I find my spirit man praying in tongues. All that I need to do is just to join. So your spirit man has the ability to pray without ceasing. And how will that happen? If the spirit man is fed with the word of God. If your spirit man is fed with the word of God, the spirit man will know what to eat from your spirit. I don't, I'm not impressed by, by a person who knows every gossip that is happening around the, the community. You know somebody's three houses away bought new curtains. And your back neighbor, your, 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 your front neighbor will reclaim your shoes. And you know the price. Kid, when it comes, I know their price. God wants you to know him better. By the word. As you read the word of God. You will know how to speak his language. And you will pray without ceasing. Am I talking to someone? I love Psalm, Psalm 103 verse 3. Psalm 103 verse 3. Today you will hold on with me. Ne? I, want, I must finish this today. So if you are in a hurry, tell Harry to go to live. He said, bless the Lord, I'm just telling from one, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Hmm. Bless the Lord. You know, when you, are, you spend time in the word of God, you have the ability to command your soul. Some of you, your souls are going astray. Some people are asthmatic, ulcer, and all that because their soul is meditating on hatred and unforgiveness. But when you pray a prayer, when you spend time in the word of God, listen to what the word of God will say. Bless the Lord, all my soul, verse 2, and forget not all his benefits. You, 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 for, you don't forget the benefits. Why? You pray without ceasing. You have given yourself time to commune with the Father. You understand the benefits. People who don't spend time with the Father don't know their benefits. They know all the bad things that are about to happen. 
Oh, really? Ah, I refer to you serious. I mean, we are, we are dead, 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 like 10 times dead. Why? You know, I mean, look, look. No. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Verse 4. Who redeems your life from destruction? Who, from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? That's the person who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God in prayer. They know their benefits. They don't stress. Even things look like they are going here. Why? They do not stress. Why? I've been communing, communing, in communion with my father. I've been in the place of koinonia. I know what my God is doing in this situation. It doesn't look good, but he's at work. Hallelujah. Number two, faith. Whatever you are worried about right now, you are saying to God, I don't trust you enough in this area of my life. Can I repeat that? Whatever you are worried about right now, you are saying to God, I do not trust you enough in this area of my life. Worry in a particular area is the lack of the revelation of the word of God concerning that area. And your faith outside revelation it's baseless. It doesn't have any foundation. Because our faith is based on the promises of God. And what are the promises of God? His word. Am I talking to someone? You live a life of what? Of faith. Number one, life of prayer. Number two, life of what? Of faith. Don't allow yourself to stress, to worry about things that are beyond your control. If you can't change it, it's none of your business. It's God's business. Okay, uh, you didn't get that one. If you can't change it, it's what? It's none of your business. Whose business? What is your responsibility? To have faith. For the just shall live by? Living by faith is not the absence of challenges. Living by faith is not the absence of situations that will challenge your life. No. Living by faith is failing to acknowledge the other situation as God over your life and give God the rightful place in your, in your life irrespective of the circumstances. Am I talking to someone? Okay. Living by faith is not a life of ignorance. You are saying to the situation, I see you, or I hear you, and I know you exist, but there is a God. There is a God that I'm dependent upon. He promised that he will never leave me nor forsake me. The fact that this situation is happening, it doesn't mean that God is God on holiday. Hallelujah. Faith. Does the Bible say faith is the substance? But many people don't have sub. They have got substance, but wrong substance. Substance. They believe more on what they have heard or read than what the Word of God is saying. But if your substance is based on our timeless God. Knowing that there are two types of times in your life. Most of you are worried because, you look at, because of the issues that are related with time. I'm telling you, 90% of things that are worried about, or people that are worried about, they are around time. I must get money when? Now. I want to do things when? Now. I want to get a new life when? Now. But you must know that God is outside what? Time. You are worried about Kronos and he's saying there is Kairos moment. There is, there is a God opportune time. Faith placed you where? In God's opportune time.
You know, I'm going to go back to Lazarus. I'm going to give you another side that you didn't see. When the sisters saw Jesus Christ coming, they said to Jesus, if you have been here on time, my brothers, my brother would have lived. <laughs> and Jesus said, no. <laughs> I'm sure in his mind he said, you are working with your watch. <laughs> I'm, I'm using my divine time. I'm in a Kairos moment. To you, it must be four days. But for me, spiritually, it's still less than 24 hours. He hasn't, he hasn't been dead for too long. In the world, as you see him, he, should, he might be stinking. But in the spiritual realm, I see someone who's ready to hear my voice and come out of the grave. He said, I'm not worried about time. I'm here at the right time. Kairos, God's opportune moment. So don't allow your faith to be moved by tangible things. Live a life of faith. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. I know somebody said, Pastor, you are talking about faith, but you are not opening Hebrews 11, verse 1. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. To me, that's faith there. In all your ways, acknowledge him how do you acknowledge him? Number one, prayer. My father who art in heaven. I'm here. Why are you here, son? You look stressed. No, daddy, I don't want to talk about my issues. Today, I just want to understand your heart concerning my life. What are you saying about me? That's a faith-based prayer. Oh, Father, kill my enemies. You promise in your word that touch not my anointed. And you see, those guys, believe in me, God, they deserve to die. No, who are you? They shall gather against your name, but it shall come to nothing. Am I talking to someone? Yes. Say, neighbor, yes. live a life of faith. Don't be moved by time. Where there is time, there is always confusion. Do you know why people are robbing people? They want money now. Do you know why people are killing people? It's because of what? Now. Husbands kill a wife for insurance. Wife kill a husband for insurance. Because of what? Now. But those who wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord. He shall renew what? Their strength. So, waiting in faith is an advantage for you. Your strength get what? Renewed. You become strong. Why, why should God give you something that needs a strong person when you are weak? When I got married, immediately six months later, I got a bigger position in Clarksdorf. I don't forget. I didn't forget that. I went there. They promised me good money. But it's not compared to what I'm in now. When I came back, I said, Pastor, I got a new job. He said, Wahafa. <laughs> My pastor was straightforward. And that, those are the words, Wahafa. <laughs> Pastor's tall. <laughs> Mr. Maligana will know. He said, You are Wahafa. I said, Why? He said, You just got married now. You want to move and leave your wife. Wait upon the Lord. He'll give you what's yours. And guess what I did? I waited. 
I said, God, I trust you. There is a daughter in the house. She called me, Daddy. I got a new job. Someone in the Northern Cape. They are giving me 70000 a month. Around Jan, end of Jan, 20, 2021, 2020, last year. End of Jan, before lockdown. I said, God is saying, wait. Don't take that job. She said, Daddy, but do you know how much money is that? I said, not yet. Do you trust God? I said, yes. We have faith in him. Wait. To cut the long story short, that company is under now because of COVID. Wait. Have faith. Hallelujah. Christians don't live with the speed of the world. We live with the speed of the spirit. No, you, 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 you didn't get that one. We live with the speed of what? Of the spirit. What is the speed of the spirit? The steps of God. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by whom? By God, by the Lord. That is the speed of the spirit. Have faith and learn to wait. Are we together? Number three. If you apply what I'm teaching you now, okay, before we go to number three, can you go to Psalms 37 verse 1? Before we go to number three, can you go to Psalms 37 verse 1? Just want to show you something quickly. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. One of the things that destroys the faith of Christians is when they see unbelievers prospering through evil ways. But pastor, I mean, that person, she just joined the company now. Now she's going to be my supervisor because she slept with the boss. We must call a spade a spade. Do not fret. Have faith in God. What God has for you is sustainable. Amen? I am sure last year after hard lockdown, when we came back from lockdown, it was testimonies. Many people got promotions. Many bought new cars here in this place. Many, many got houses. Remember, it was houses, no? It was promotion increasing. I mean, in the midst of COVID, God was increasing his people. Where is your faith? Don't allow the world to dictate how you should believe. I was watching a movie of a young girl. She was a gospel star. She used to sing gospel. They recruited her to the music of the world. I loved what she did. They said, in this, when you sing this song, you must wear, because it's a, that song requires you to be semi-naked. She walked out of the office of the producer. She said, my mother told me about this. I didn't believe it. Now I'm seeing it. She went and waited upon the Lord, and she became a great gospel worshiper. The world wanted to see her naked so that she can make money. So, faith will require you to sacrifice what you believe is important now. Am I talking to someone? Let us move. Number three. Meditation on the word of God. Psalm 63. Verse 6 to 8. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. Wow. That's what 
Imagine. Oh, uh, let us start with the right part, with, 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 with the last verse. My soul follows close behind you. Do you know what does that mean? That person is connected to God. The soul of that person cannot be led astray. Why? Because of the meditation of the word of God. People can come and present good things. I remember in the wedding, one of the daughters, we were marrying one of the daughters in the house. I met this pastor from some other far countries. He said to me, Pastor, do you believe in miracles? I said, yes, I do believe in miracles. He said, your church can be full in three months. Like, I said, Ian, I must listen. <laughs> he said, no, you don't have to do anything. I've got a good oil. <laughs> We're sitting in the bus. <laughs> he said, I've got a very good oil. He said, okay. Good oil. He said, yes. He said, no, you will see what, what that oil does. He said, there's nothing wrong with that oil. Don't worry. It's not magic. It's just, it's just a prayed for. I said, this one wants to deceive me. And they say, you will be the greatest man of them all. You will prophesy. You will perform miracles. I said to him one question. Who is the greatest in the world? Whom did Jesus Christ say the greatest in the Bible? He said, he said, I don't know. He said, let's go to the word. John the Baptist. He said, amongst all the prophets, John is the greatest. He didn't mention Isaiah. I said to him, how many miracles did John perform? Zero. What was John's focus? Salvation of souls. He's called the greatest. I said, if John is called the greatest because he released the pure word of God in that time, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And they came, they were baptized. He was just losing the word. And why did Jesus Christ did after he was after after he was tried in the desert? He was tried in the desert. His, his first message was what? Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. I said to him, now, if John the Baptist is the greatest by releasing the word only, where is the word of God in that oil? He said, hey, I'm thirsty. I need to go get water. And that was the end of our conversation. Why? When you meditate upon the word of God, you are not easily deceived. I said to someone, I'm prophetic. They know. Those who know me, they know. I, if I want this church full tomorrow, it can happen. I can just focus on the gift and not the purpose. I can prophesy every day. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do? Teach the word. Why? Because the word of God is life. Your breakthrough is not on how many potatoes are there in your house. Your breakthrough is not, is not me knowing the number plate of your father's car that you drove in 1971. Your breakthrough is knowing who you are in the word of God. That's why Jesus Christ, when the enemy came to him, he said, it is written. As a child of God, you should be able to stand up daily because you meditate upon the word of God and say, it is written. When the enemy throws all the issues, you stand up, it is written. When they come and deceive you, where is it in the word? No, it is written. Have, be a friend of your Bible. Make a, give yourself a study program. You know what? This week I want to understand faith. You read about faith. This week I want to understand giving. You read about giving. This, this week I want to understand about meditating upon the word of God. You, you, you study about that. Upon all things, when Moses died, God did not say, Joshua, Hey, my boy, you don't have experience. Eh? Hey, your boss is dead. 
you know what you know what you need to do Joshua you need to train your army eh? because now Joshua Moses led you now you are the lead the prophet of war because Joshua is the prophet of war he's the one who led Israel to to most wars in fact Joshua defeated 31 kings in the 31 kings meaning every day there is a king that must be defeated that's what that's what people say when they interpret the bible but God you know said Joshua you need to train your soldiers. Now you know you are not experienced. Ne? You are not experienced. Your Moses is dead. You are in trouble, my boy. No. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Can you go to Joshua 1? I want you to see something. That, that we, we run for things that are not important and ignore the most important one, the word. He said, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua the son of Nun, Moses has stood and saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, re- arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to, to, to the land which I'm giving you, to them, to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I'll give you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness, okay, I'm, I'm going to jump that. It's geographical. Number five, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I mean, God, I mean, Joshua is a young man. God is giving this promise, whatever you step shall be yours. He's not saying, I'm going to give you 50,000 soldiers. And he said, no man shall be able to stand before you. He's not saying, I'm going to give you 50,000 bodyguards. But check what qualifies that. God on verse 6 said, Be strong and be of good courage. For these people who shall divide as an inheritance the land which I saw to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and be courageous. You shall add that you observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn to it from it to the right and to the left. Which law? What is the law? The word of God. And that you may prosper wherever you go. And now he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. So, I want you to have a different angle of Joshua again. Joshua is very young. He has never led two million people. He had Moses' assistance, but we don't hear Joshua speaking or God speaking to Moses, to, to Joshua on behalf of Moses. No. The first time God speaks to Joshua is when Moses was dead. But he's saying to Joshua, no, you don't need to worry about these things. The word. The land is, all the promises that I promise you are yours. All that you need to do, the word. Everything that, you, that I told your forefathers are yours. All that you need to do is what? The word. Meditate upon this word. Day and night. Many of us are meditating upon our issues. Day and night. And what do we spend up doing? We end up coming up with plans. You know, I've got this plan. I think it will work. Hmm? Will it work? No. No. Let me change here. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Hmm? Well, no, no, no. Let me change here. No, this is what I'm gonna say. What is the word of God saying about your situation? Hallelujah. Psalm one one nine. Verse one thirty three. Psalm hundred and nineteen. Verse 133, what does he say? Psalms 119, verse 133. I mean, there is a verse called 133. And Psalm, Psalm 119, please go and read it. it. It almost contains the whole Bible. You'll, you'll see Leviticus, you'll see Deuteronomy, you'll see everything. Psalm 119. Direct my steps by your word. And Lord, no iniquity have dominion over me. The word of God will, will let you know where you go. There was a time that we just bought a house. 
with mommy. As usual, we went to Furniture City. It was here in Alberton. We wanted to get to furnish the whole house. Like instant, like we got a new house, there must be new furniture. We went there, we applied for credit. No, they gave us a good credit. So that we could buy everything that we need, good, good quality furniture. So I was almost meditating upon the word. He shall supply all your needs. According, according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. As I meditated upon the word, the Holy Spirit said, came to me. We are not going back to Furniture City to take that furniture. Because they were waiting for us to come and sign tomorrow so that everything can be delivered. He said, you are not going back there. I said, why? He said, you are not going. That's not how I want to furnish your house. I stopped. One month, nothing happened. Two months, nothing happened. Three months, something happened. We got a, we, we, we got a deal. We worked, money came, we bought furniture cash. Like cash. Since then, we've never stopped. Everything that we buy in the house is cash. Why? When God orders your steps, he will find you according to what? To the place of your faith. When you are a sower, you will say, go sow. When you are work, you will say, go work. When you clean the church, you will say, go and clean the church. The word will direct your steps. Psalm 119, verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is established in the heavens. I rather meditate upon the word that is established in the heavens. Why? Let your will be done here on earth as it is where? In heaven. So if the word is established in heaven, so the will of God is done where? In my life. Don't read the Bible when you're looking for a verse to quote to prove a point here in Zalwan. You go to Google, you go everything. Yeah, I got the word. I'm going to tell this scripture. You even send it on WhatsApp. Yeah, this is what the word of God says. Urino. The word, you are saying this is what the word of God says, Urin, but the very same word is not established in your life. <laughs> Number four. Number four, obey. Obey God. Job 36 verse 11. Number four, obey God. Job 36 verse 11. Job. Job 36 verse 11. Ni wege pa tum twa lo we sono You know the song, ne? Yeah, James. If they obey and serve me, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. There is nothing as hating as a disobedient son. I was once one to my father. The first time I saw my father's tears, it was because of me. I was naughty. I wanted to do my will. He was talking to my aunt. He did not know that I was there. He cried, and that friend that day, I changed my ways. And after that, I woke up, washed the car, polished his shoes. After a few weeks, I was back in his plans. He was able to say, hey, Pumunani will do this. Okay, let Pumunani, Pumunani will take the car. You will go do this one, two, three. Some of us are outside the plans of God because of, of disobedience. God can plan his will for this world around you. Remember, we were talking about the things that will make us, ne? we need to close every gate in this season. These are serious times. You don't want to find yourself with a door open. 
But even if your door is open, if, if ever you made a mistake, God is gracious. His, his grace, grace and mercies are new every day. Amen? Say, so if they obey and serve me, I begin to serve at home. I begin to do the garden. They give me a buggy to go and take manure. I was go, you know, cow, cow down for the veggies. When I came back, I was excited that I'm back on my father's books. I was reversing. I hit the fence. And guess what? I'm, I won't tell you what, what when you're in your father's books. I reversed the car and I speed it, hit the fence. The tires end up hanging on the air. And my father just came out and said, please, move it, move it a little bit forward. And when I stepped out, I was waiting for him to shout at me. No, he said, no, it's fine. Take, take out the manual. I said, just like that? I realized that, no. I made a mistake while I was obeying him and serving him. So that released the grace. If I did that, if I bumped with the car, if I stole the car in disobedience to my fathers and I bumped the car, what, what would have happened? It was, he was not going to be gracious or merciful the way he did. His language will be different. But because I was busy saving him and made a mistake, he, he understood. If I didn't even shout, we just went to check, said, ah, oh, this small thing's fine, take out the manual. And there's, my heart was like, 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 I'm waiting for him to release those words or some book. No. He's happy that now my boy is making mistakes at the right place. Under my father's watch. So when you obey God and save him, you will make mistakes, but under his watch. And you will say, it's okay, my daughter. It's okay, my son. My grace is sufficient for you. So when you live a life of obedience, you are not afraid to make mistakes. You are not afraid to serve. Because actually, those who make mistakes are those who are busy working. Stagnant people don't make mistakes. <laughs> if you are doing nothing, you won't make mistakes. Am I talking to someone? Say, neighbor, if you, if you obey God and serve him, you shall spend your days in prosperity and all your years in pleasure. But I want to correct something. Second John, third John 3. Eh? Let me check. Because when I say prosperity, some people will say, but I've been saving God. Why am I not like Muzipe? Where am I? Third, third John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Do you understand where prosperity comes from? It's an inside out. Eh? When you, the word, remember we spoke about the word of God. When the word of God prospers you, your soul does what? Prosper. You become what? In good health and prosper in all things. So God is not a God who will give you all the money and the riches in the world. And then Kamu Utamaya. Utu really take Kamu. You are not in good health. No. As your and be in good health. So the prosperity that God is looking for first for you, your soul prospers. How? Through the word. So that's why I say if you obey and save him, those who are saving him will be meditating upon what? His word. Because we cannot save God outside what? The word. Am I talking to someone? Say, neighbor, I love what I'm eating today. Say, my spirit man, it was doodla. Say, my spirit man is becoming healthier than I expected. Deuteronomy 5.33 The area of obedience to God is serious. Therefore, you shall be careful 
and do as the Lord God has commanded you. You shall not turn right, turn aside to the right, to the right hand or to the left. Thirty-three, you shall walk in all the ways which the Lord God has commanded you, that you may live and that you may, it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Obedience prolong our days. Obedience does what? Prolong our days. Children obey your prayer, your parents. It, it speaks about what? Prolonging what? Our days. Father, Pastor, you are just saying obedience. Can you please give us an example of obedience? I'm going to ask you one question. What is, what is it in your life which is the greatest threat to your obedience of God? What is it in your life which is the greatest threat to the obedience of your God? That is your answer. What is it in your life which is the greatest threat of your God? That is your answer. You deal with that one. Amen? Is God condemning you? No, I just told you about the story of my accident. After being excited at home driving the car, I bumped my father's bike. Yeah, it was it had a serious dent. But was was my dad mad at me? No. Where I was? Where, where was what was I doing? So obedience is a journey. And in the journey of obedience, you'll make what? Mistakes. God is not looking for perfect children. He's looking for what? Obedient children. In not witnessing to souls is disobedience. Not, win, not doing soul winning. It's, the, it's, one, it's, serious, it's, it's one sin that the church is struggling on. Because those are the last commandments. Matthew 28 verse 19. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. We have all the programs. There's one thing that God told me one day. He said, people can spend 100,000 on conferences. And when it comes to evangelism, we don't have budget. Hundred thousand because pastors, the pastors are coming. They must see that this church is beautiful. We are looking good and all that. But when it comes to evangelizing, there is no budget. People can contribute for the conference, but ask them to contribute for the budget of evangelism. It's one serious act of disobedience that the church of God. I'm not talking about this church. The body of Christ is suffering. So when I speak about obedience, I'm talking about sin that you know. The sin of omission is of disobedience. What we don't do, what we're supposed to do. We cannot ignore soul winning. We cannot. You must tell yourself. I was talking to one of the daughters in the house. She said, Daddy, there are people who want to come. I've invited them. They say that they don't have a taxi, but I'm willing to pay for them to come to church. I want them to come and hear the word of God. He said, God bless that soul. God increase that soul. Hallelujah. Are you happy? Say, God, I thank you for talking to me this way. It shows that you still care. I don't know why God always put disobedience with prosperity. Can you go to 1 Kings 2, 2, 3? 1 Kings 2, 3. You will see, I'm everywhere I read about obedience, there is always prosperity. Are we poor because we are not obeying God enough? 1 Kings 2, 3. And keep the charge of Jehovah thy God and walk in his ways to keep his statutes, that's his word, and his commandments and his ordinance and his testimonies according to that which is written in the law of Moses that you may prosper in all that you dwest. And what, yeah, okay, that English is too English. 
that you may prosper in all that you do and whatever you turn. So meaning that if you are not obedient, there is something that can unlock our prosperity. If I were you today, I would say, Father, and the good thing about God, ne? Mr. Ratanya, the good thing about God, God is not saying do this by your own strength. Yeah. Yeah. If you are willing, when you are willing, what does he do? The Holy Spirit helps you. But man, he's a good father. He's a good father. He's not saying run 100 meters marathon and number one. But I've never trained. He said, no. Are you willing? Yes. Okay, the Holy Spirit is there. He will help you. Meaning, on the process of the Holy Spirit helping you to be obedient, you're going to make mistakes. You, you won't be perfect at a goal. Like a child learning to walk. They walk, they run, they fall. But, you know, after the age of seven, six, now you can see that these guys, when they fall, yeah, it hurts seriously because they were not expecting it. God is, but he knows, he's saying, just say, I'm willing. He will do the rest. Hallelujah. Number five, we are almost done. Now, number five, I, I just spoke about him. Live a life depending on the Holy Spirit. Trust, the, trust in the Lord. In other words, live your life dependent on the Holy Spirit. Don't trust your intuition. You know, you know I, I think I must do this. The moment you say, I think I must do this, don't do it. Number one, if you, th you say, I think I must, then don't do it. Say, I feel pressed in my spirit, man, that I must do this. Then do it. You are being led by the Holy Spirit. You know, I think, I think, uh, uh, if you come to me talking about the things of God, you say, I think, I will listen. But just know that it's an akamu, it's akamu. Somebody who is a male, I think pastor we must do this. And I asked this question. Did you pray about this? Pastor, but it's a good idea. Don't you think? <laughs> we have the Holy Spirit, not the ideas. Holy Spirit, you know, you know how sad to God is to watch his children st struggling in life where is, there is someone that Jesus Christ said, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm living with the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things and he will tell you what to do, when to do it and how to do it. And yet we are struggling with our lives. We need to make a conscious decision that from today onwards, I'm dependent on the Holy Spirit. He will wake you up and pray now. When you pray, you realize that no, you just saved somebody from being involved in an accident. Pray now. When you pray, you didn't know that, okay, there are people, the senior managers are, are gathered up about you. They want to make a decision. As you're praying, Holy Spirit is influencing. As you release the word, we say, Riva, Kosita, Riva, Holy Spirit is influencing. Favor. Favor. But, but the qualifications are not enough. No, he knows the work. She knows the work. Favor. Favor. As you pray, so when Holy Spirit will guide you. Whenever Holy Spirit says do something, he wants to align you with what God is doing in that moment. Most of us miss God because we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, uh, can, can, can I just tell you, Holy Spirit, do you know, Holy Spirit is, the, is, is that person who was burning in the bush when Moses saw him. It's the Holy Spirit. In Mount Sinai, he's that, he's, he's that one who was burning the mountain where they say Moses entered the glory inside the fire. It is the same God. And he is the same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead. And he's saying, I want to guide your life. Listen to my voice. 
But what did Satan do? He, pray, he keep people oppressed by stress and worry and anxiety so that they miss the Holy Spirit. You need, to, you need to be able to say, I denounce and renounce the spirit of stress, worry, and anxiety. And I receive the voice of the Holy Spirit upon my life. Hallelujah. Why do we depend on the Holy Spirit? Because we are sealed with him. Genesis 15 verse 17, when after Abraham has cut the pieces of animals where he's supposed to walk and seal the covenant with God, guess who walked? The Holy Spirit as a torch of fire. He walked, he sealed the covenant. So even to this day, your salvation is sealed by the Holy Spirit. Whatever that you want from God, Holy Spirit has it. Whatever that, the Bible, Jesus Christ said, he will, he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Who's that? The Holy Spirit. When the disciples were baptized by the Holy Spirit, they knew who they were. They knew that they will never be the same again. They stood up against the Roman army. So, okay, do you want us to listen to you? They said, no, you must stop preaching against this name. Powered by the Holy Spirit, you cannot stop that person. Be guided by him. Make decisions. You see, all these nuggets that I'm giving you, I'm not teaching today. I'm giving you the nuggets. So that when we move from now onwards, we must live an established Christian life. I love what one of the sons who joined the church some time back said, since I, came, since I came to this church, there is progress in my life. I see progress. He said, you know what? We don't do our will. When the water flows from the altar, it gives life to every living thing. So who's that word? It's the Holy Spirit. Out of belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. What does the rivers of living water do? They give life to every area of your life. So when you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, what does he do? He gives life to every area of your life. Hallelujah. Say, say I love you, Holy Spirit. Say, be closer to me than before. Say, I'm willing to listen to you. Say, talk to me. I will do what God wants me to do. Allow that child to speak in tongues. He's meditating. That's that the language of the Holy Spirit. The fact that you can't hear it doesn't mean that uh, God can't hear it. <laughs> Ephesians 1.13 Ephesians 1.13 In him you also trusted after you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, the good news of in whom you also even believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I love it when they say he's the Holy Spirit of promise. He's, he's the tabernacle of witness. He said, you shall receive power and you shall be witness. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power, you shall be a witness. What is the witness? You shall see what God is doing. You shall have the evidence of the works of God in your life. You can't witness that which does not exist. And the very same witness, he wants to seal. He wants to be the seal of your salvation, the promises of God. Listen to him. I urge you to listen to the Holy Spirit. Talk to him. Say, I surrender to you. There will never be confusion in your life. You will find yourself being ahead in your workplace. They ask you, but how did you know that you were about to do this? No, I just wake up and do this. Oh, No, it's what we discussed. Did somebody tell you that what, what we decided in the boardroom? No, the Holy Spirit. He's telling you what to do. He'll make you relevant in your community. He'll make you relevant in your workplace. 
He will make you relevant in the spiritual realm. He is, the, he is your authority in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Number six. Yeah, we're two to go now. Two to go. I know today we're taking a bit longer, but hang in there. It's a good foundation for next week, right? Two to go. Giving. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to be a successful farmer? Plant. I always give this, I always ask this question to everyone and to this church I've asked this several times. You have two farmers. You have two farmers, Pastor T. And these two farmers wants you to pray for them. They want harvest, a bountiful harvest. You go to the first farmer. When you walk to the farm, you, you feel like you're walking inside Kuruga National Park. Nothing has been planted. It's his farm, but it's only a house and his family inside there. When you walk in there, when, according to your observation, he's saying, I'm expecting harvest. Pray for me so that my harvest can be plenty, hundredfold. Will you pray for that farmer? Nothing has been planted. And you walk, you're done with the farm, he said, and you want to, to the next farmer. As you drive through the grade, the gate, you see sprinklers. They are watering. As you pass through, you see some sprouts coming up the ground. As you drive through, you see workers pruning the trees, preparing them. And when you, when you step inside the house, when the farmer says, pray for the harvest, what are you going to do? Won't you have faith to pray? So when we don't give, we are like the first farmer. There are certain things that you only activate them by giving. As much as there are certain things you activate them by saving, there are certain things that are only activated by giving. No, in, in, it said see, have seed and harvest time. As long as the earth remains, seed and what? And harvest. Seed time and harvest shall not what? Cease. So the second farmer who you see sprinklers, what are those sprinklers? He's planted the seed. The sprinklers are the prayers. Father, I'm dependent upon you. And the ones who's pruning, he's saying, where I'm not fine, where I was not obedient, I'm being pruned. Because whatever that God prunes bears what, what? Much more fruit. Hallelujah. Luke 6, 38 says, give, it shall be given back unto you. A good measure pressed and shaken together shall men give unto your bosom. I want to put it to you. You can never outgive God. You can never outgive God. I was looking at our finances at home, what me and Pastor T are giving to the church every, every month. I realized that we are giving well over 10,000 every month. I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to say the amount. I know the amount. But me and her combined were giving to the church well over 10,000. Where did we get this? When David was building the temple, God said, no, stop. Don't give. Don't, don't build. He took all the money that he was supposed to use to build the temple. He gave it to Solomon. Solomon what, did what? Build the temple with the money. So, you need to be a giver that moves the heart of God. When Solomon slaughtered the, the cattle, a thousand cattle, he was asking for wisdom only because he was about to be a king. And God said, no, because you did not ask for the life of your enemies, you asked for wisdom only, I will give you wealth. Even to this day, no person will ever live on earth that will ever be richer than Solomon. When they calculate his wealth in today's terms, it's well over a trillion U.S. dollars. 
And we don't have billion, trillionaires. We only have billionaires. And there is no hope that they will ever be a trillionaire now. When God says give in his house, he's not saying that because he lacks. He wants you to open your hand so that he can put. When you give, you are opening your hand. He can give something to your hand. God lacks nothing. I have proven it to me several times. I was telling someone how much is our mixer. They said, but your church, your ch- the size of your church and the price of the mixer, they don't correspond. The speakers, they said, the size of your church and the price of the speakers do not correspond. Why? We are a giving church. This church gives. Eh? We have given instruments to other churches. Now we have given church. There is somebody who just started a church, a church in Krugadrop. We have given them church, church to start. That is the way we've given. We are a giving church. Your church gives. If you see all the successes of soul winning of Christ for all nations, just say I'm involved because your church is financially involved in soul winning with Christ for all nations. We have never stopped. It has been happening for a long time. We are a giving church. That's the reason why even COVID could not close down this church because our rent we paid between 21,000, 22,000 a month. Look at your number and ask yourself, where is this money coming from? God protects those who give unto his kingdom. They never lack. So make a decision to give and tithe. Tithing, you are saying to God, you are married to my salary. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? What are you saying to God? You are married to what? Yes, if God is married to his salary, what, what will you do with your salary? Take care of it. Uh, I don't know why when, when the church speaks about giving, but I'll never talk about tens. When I say you are blessed, you, 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 you become the happiest church. When you speak about giving, over the tension, no, I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. You shall give and you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you shall be free to give. I rebuke the spirit of condemnation and guilt. You shall give. Amen. You shall give. That I can't believe I said that. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Second Corinthians 9.10, let us go to, before we go to, to the last two. Second Corinthians 9.10, giving is the heart. I want to come to that part. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. If you make a decision that you will be a giver, God will give you what to give and bless you for giving. Just imagine the father we have. It's just a decision that I'm going to be a giver. Not that he said, just make a decision that I want to be a giver. And mean it with all your heart, with all your soul. He said, I supply seed to the sower. There is a man who is still going to, we went, went to the church called Angi Boxberg. What's the name? Shiloh. 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 The man. He's a multimillionaire by now. He wanted to give. There was a project at church. He said, God, I want to give 100,000. And God gave him 1 million. He said, 10%, you know where to take it to. He said, you know where to take 10%. He said, you want to give 100,000? Okay, it's fine. The rest is yours. He gives seed to the sower. So if your heart is not prepared to give, You are closing the doors that will give seed for you. We got a house through giving. We did not qualify for the house. Not at all. We got it through giving. I sold a Toyota Corolla. Sold it for 20,000. 10,000 to the church. And instantly our pastor became our estate agent. (laughs) 
He got an estate agent for us. The estate agent took us to the house that we live in. It was the first house that the estate agent took us in, and we loved the house. We got it. We negotiated the price. It went down from 870,000 then. Eh? That was 15 years ago. That house was 870,000, 15 years ago. It went down. They cut the price down. Somebody gave us money. We went to register the municipality. Everything just opened. And by then, we were still blacklisted. <laughs> but we got the house. So let the seed speak for you. The seed knows to speak the language in the spiritual realm that you cannot speak. There are certain prayers. There are two, there are two types of prayers that you cannot speak. You don't know the prayer of the Holy Communion. When you take Holy Communion, you don't know what the prayer of the blood of Jesus Christ, what the blood of Jesus Christ prayed the day, the day because the blood speaks. And you, the moment you take the Holy Communion, you are activating that prayer. You don't know what is said, but all that I know is the prayer that saved because by his blood I'm saved. And also the seed prayer. You don't know the prayer that the seed speaks when it's out because you cannot pray it. Only the seed can pray that prayer. Hallelujah. Are we together? When you obey God and give, you will never be in need. God wants you to give so that you can show him how much you depend on him. Independence candidates in the kingdom of God are a problem. Ah, more than enough. You are breathing his oxygen. <laughs> Number seven, forgive. You cannot be a child of God and not have the ability to forgive. You are seated in that chair with Pizza Muzalwani because you were forgiven. Not because you are a perfect person. Not because you are a saint, you are holier than thou. You are a product of grace. It is your responsibility. If you are waiting for a perfect person so that you can forgive them, you will find them in your grave when you die. They have no ability to make a mistake. They cannot move. They cannot even offend anyone. They can't even offend the worms that are eating them. A heart that cannot forgive, cannot be heard by God. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us. You cannot hold a grudge for 15 years. What, what kind of a storeroom do you have? I mean, 12 times 15. 365 Times 15. When I every day, Yo, your SD card is big. <laughs> your memory is too big. It is for your own good when you forgive. Let me tell you one thing. Eh? Okay. Can, can somebody come? Can somebody come quickly? Please come. Come quickly. Please give me that... Uh, uh, well, for offering. I want to show you something. What is that stick that we use to 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 to, to, to switch on? Uh, only one will do. Yeah, I will first. Can I can I have that, that stick that we use to, 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 to switch on? I have then I want to turn same thing. Put it up like this. Like this. I want, I want to show you something. I have a so, when a heart that does not forgive praise, that's what your prayers are doing. They are not going anywhere. You have created a steel plate around you. You are praying. And this is what God hears. You are saying a lot of words, but God is hearing this. Because of the heart. You are praying times, God, yeah? Because of the heart. 
God, I'm sick. He hears nothing. That, that is what your heart does. That is an unforgiving heart. Thank you. When you forgive, you are not doing it for the person that you are forgiving. You are doing it for your own good. It's for your own heart. It has nothing to do with the person that has offended you. It is for your own heart. So he says, if you want to give and you realize that, that I did not forgive my brother, why? He said, what? Stop giving and go out and forgive your brother. What are you doing? When you give without forgiveness, you are like somebody who's sowing boiled seeds or roasted seeds. They won't grow. Romans 12, 7. Say, neighbor, Chorella. So that honor of I mean, imagine how stupid unforgiveness is. You are so angry at me, I will try to give a rock. And then I can rub it. And come hook is you let me hold the lip up because hot you hot. I'm fine and I'm sleeping. The way the way you can I can't even turn. I can't even hear your heart. I'm so much at peace. And on our two fruit. How ten I fell. How ten I should what? You how ten I should King, what's happening? H. What was Tolebar? One unto Ella Hamp. And it's Tolekamo. What what the change had to get a cra what oh na go up time I will come on. And a and a come on linga is dreaming. Yes, he, he went to God. He said, Father, I've disobeyed your child. I don't even know how to approach your child. I've, I've hurt your child. Can I find ways of asking forgiveness? You are angry at someone who's busy talking to God about you. God, can I find ways to go and ask forgiveness? But I'm afraid of that face. Every time I'm born, I say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I go pan a lean over the mood. The next thing I'm pon over gorilla. Korea. What situations? You know, God, how do I do that? Stole is struggling with God. I want to be forgiven by that person that I've offended. When I we kill them, we try Satan. You are planning how to hurt Stole. You won't win. You won't win because that man is talking to God. Or that woman is talking to God. You won't win. You will hurt yourself in the process of trying to hurt someone. So what do you do? Forgive. I'm giving you the nuggets. Forgive. Romans 12. Romans 12. Verse 8. He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberty, he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. I want, to, I want the word, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Unchwaret, Verse 9. Is that mercy with cheerfulness? I, I forgive you, my sister, but it's fine. I'll, let me first cool down, give a right. One day we'll have tea. We're going to have a discussion of what happened so that doesn't happen again. I forgive you, my brother. If you can't pay me, it's okay. Let's sit down and make arrangement and see how and how, and, and how we can work this one out. And wh wh what are you struggling with? Uh, okay, it's fine. I'll be staying in the gap for prayer for you. I want, I want to go. I will pray for breakthrough. Pray for breakthrough so that he can pay you back. You show him to copy you struggling and he can't pay you back. So which one is more wisdom? Hallelujah. Are we together? Let us be a forgiving church.
you, 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 I'm sure you don't want what you, what you heard. Ne? Kung, kung, you are praying. Mudimutwa, kung, kung. Because the temple is all the sapang. Your steel plate that you've created. Kapilui kovehile. Number eight, the last one. Be at church. Because you'll be taught what you were taught today. <laughs> there is someone who's sitting at home because of unforgiveness or because of sickness or because of disease or whatsoever. But when you are seated here at church, you, what do you get? Hebrews 10.25, what does he say? Read, read, read it all of you, Hebrews 10.25. Yeah, the way people are so dependent on, on the screen, they don't look at their Bible. Everybody, I'm separate. Why people are looking at me? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Hebrews 10 25. What does it say? Not forsaking for what? For assembling together, as the custom of some is, by exalting one another so much more than you see the day drawn near. You know, when you are at church, you like coal. What's one malash? One coal is ineffective. But when the coals become more effective, when they are joined together and they are burning together, they release what the desired heat, and the release will the heat will release what the desired results. Or like the wood, you cannot have a bonfire with one wood. We need all of them combined together. So there are certain prayers that can only make breakthrough if they are offered corporately. If they are offered what? Corporately. And also, this is where your altar is. This is where your God is. I'm not saying it's not at all. But you know, it's not that God, I've made an appointment with you that every Sunday, 10 o'clock, we are meeting. And God honors that appointment. And cast Sunday, 10 o'clock, he's expecting you at some place. When we are seated at some place. You know, we, we, and because people don't understand the value of the ways that we speak and the covenant that we speak, if as a church we're saying our service starts at 10 o'clock, whom are we servicing? Let's start there. Which church service? Who, 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 who's being serviced? Eh? We're offering services to to God. That's why the first thing that we work in here, we don't work in here just come in and say, I'm preaching. We worship. And God has been waiting for you. He said, no man, this church has been going on for six months, but there's one voice in that worship. That person has made a covenant with me, but it's not there. And he said, I'm a covenant-keeping God. A God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. So he's waiting for you here when you are at home. If there is lockdown, we'll understand. But if God says 10 o'clock we are here, be here. Believe you me, you don't enter a place of a covenant with God and live empty-ended. It is not possible. You might not feel what you are living with. But spiritually, there is a shift. There is a benefit. There is something that you are holding as you leave this place. That will come in handy. Maybe tomorrow or the next hour or the next month. But it was only released when? Today. Am I talking to someone? Do not forsake the gathering for assembly. If we say Thursday we are meeting. God is saying he's not expecting you in your house on Thursday. He's expecting you where you, you made a promise with him. Unless otherwise there is something else. Can you all stand up? I've tried to push. I know that today I've pushed you too much. 20 past 1. You, from half past 11, half past 12, to leave in the church, 20 past 1. These are not the nuggets that I can cut and say I'll finish up the next Sunday. Amen? As much as you don't, when, when you bake, you don't put flour and switch on the oven. It's not going to work, ne? Hmm? Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. You have all heard God.